Hi friends, this is Aishwarya from Freshersworld.com. Welcome to our YouTube channel on Jobs and Careers. The topic that we are going to look today is Surds and Indices. This is like a simple simplification that you feel in number systems. So let's just go inside the concepts so that you will be able to solve the uh, sums better. So, laws of indices and laws of certs. So let's just cover the laws of indices first, then we go to the certs. These are just basic concepts you should know. You don't have to mug up all these formulas. Once you get to know what is this all concept is about, it will be very easy for you to solve the sum. So the first one is nothing but a par m into a par n. If they are going to give a question like that, what you have to do is that you have the common denominator. So you will take that and then add your powers. So it becomes m a par m into a par n becomes a in par m plus n. Similarly, let's take if it's a par m divided by a par n, it's nothing but a par m minus n. So next they are given a par m the whole par n. This is nothing but m into n. So that's why we have written it as a par m into n. Next is a b the whole par n which is nothing but a b here is nothing but a into b the whole par n. So while writing it you can write it as a par n into b par n. The next is the same concept as this one. So a by b the whole par n can be written it as a par n by b par n and we as, as we all know that a par 0 is nothing but 1. So these are the things that comes under laws of indices. In case of laws of search, it's nothing but our simple square roots. So n root of a is nothing but a par 1 by n. So n root of a b is nothing but n root of a into n root of b because here a b is nothing but a into b. So what we did here the same thing only is going to be applied here. Similarly if a by b is nothing but n root of a by n root of b. Here they have given n root of a the whole par n. So n root of a can be written as a par 1 by n. The whole par n they have already given so you write it here. So 1 by n into 1 by n gets cancelled so the value becomes a. So if you see something like question like that you can directly write the value of a here. So to understand this concept better let's solve some simple sums today. So let's just get started with the sums now. So the question that they have given is 81 3 by 4. How to simplify this? We know that 81 can is nothing but 3 power 4 because we know 3 into 3 9, 9 into 3 27, 27 into 3 is nothing but 81. So it can be written it as 3 power 4. The whole power what they have given in the question 3 power 4. So if you remember what we discussed in the previous thing about the laws and services concept, you know that this can be multiplied. So 4 into 3 by 4. You can just easily cancel it which is nothing but 3 power 3 which is nothing but 3 into 3 into 3 which is nothing but 27. So 81 3 by 4 is nothing but 27. This is how you simplify. Let's take another example. So they have given 1024 the whole power minus 4 by 5. What is 1024? So if you solve it, so mostly if you see that in a very simple question, you will know always the power that you are going to take here and this will be same for a simple question. So here I am taking this 1024, I know it is nothing but 4 power 5. 4 power 5, the whole power, what they have given in the question? Minus 4 by 5. So 4 power 5 into minus 4 by 5. So, which is nothing but 4 minus 4. So, how we can write it? Nothing but 1 by 4 power 4 is nothing but 1 by 2, 5, 6. So, 2, 5, 6 is nothing but 4 into 4 into 4 into 4. So, the question they have given is 1, 0, 2, 4 the whole power minus 4 by 5 which can be simplified into 1 by 2, 5, 6. So once you see the question, just see how it can be brought out to the nearby value which can be cancelled by the power that they have given. Once you know that concept, you can easily solve it to a variable here. Let's just solve a couple of other sums. So the next sum they have given is 0 0.0016 the whole power 3 by 4. So how it this can be written? Nothing but 16 divided by 10000. So the whole power 3 by 4. Okay. So, how this can be simplified such that you can cancel it over here. So, 16 is nothing but 2 power 4 and 10,000 is nothing but 10 power 4. The whole of 3 by 4. So, these have a common powers here. So, it can be also written as and it, 2 by 10 the whole power 4 into 3 by 4. This can be cancelled now. So, 2 by 10 can be also written as 1 by 5. So 1 by 5 the whole power 3 
which is nothing but 1 by 125. So what did we do here? So they have given a decimal system. So we just converted it into a fraction and then we made sure we got a power number which can be cancelled by the power that they have given. Then once we cancel it, we get the answer. So simple as that. So let's go to the another question. So they have given 17 power 3.5 into 17 power x is equal to 17 power 8. So based on the concepts we know, we can know that this plus this is equal to this. So nothing but 3.5 plus x is equal to 8. So nothing but x is equal to 8 minus 3.5 which is nothing but x is equal to 4.5. So they will give you this question and ask you to find what is the value of x. What do we do? Based on the concept, we know that whatever is there in the power, we generally add it. So 3.5 plus x and equate it to here. When we can do this? When all these numerators are equal. So we see 17 across the equation. So we take this. So 3.5 plus x is equal to 8. And we do that x is equal to 8 minus 3.5, where x is equal to 4.5. This is how we solve the sums. Let's just solve one more sum on this topic. So the next question that they have given is a by b the whole power x minus 1 is equal to b by a the whole power x minus 3. So when can we equate this equation? When a by b is there throughout. So here they have given b by a. So how we can change it? If you take the inverse of it. So this can be rewritten as a by b the whole power minus of x minus 3. So, write the same equation again, a by b, the whole power x minus 1. Now, it's a by b and a by b across. Now, you equate it. So, x minus 1 is equal to minus of x minus 3. x minus 1, this can be write, written as 3 plus minus x. So, take the x there. So, 2x is equal to 4 and x is equal to 2. So what they have given in the question, they have given a by b x power minus 1, b by a x minus minus 3. We should equate it to the same base. So what do we do here? We take the inverse of this equation which is nothing but a by b. Here we take minus here, minus of x minus 3. Now a by b base is common. So we equate the pass here. So x minus 1 is equal to this and you get the value of x. So these are the basic sums in thirds and indices. So why did we solve these sums? This shows the concept that I was just telling you before. So you should know the concept. You don't have to buy hard each and everything to know it. So once you know the concept, which and all to add, which and all to subtract, then it will be very easy for you to solve the sum. The topic that we are going to look today is thirds and indices. So let's get started. The given question is, given that x is equal to 10 power 0.48 and y is equal to 10 power 0 0.70 and x power z is equal to y square, then the value of z is close to. So let's use the value that they have given here. So x is equal to 10 power 4, 8 and y is equal to 10 power 0 0.70. So with this equation, let's find the value of z. x power z is equal to y square. So let's substitute whatever the values we know. x is equal to 10 power 0 0.48. So 10 power 0 0.48 into z. z is given here, which is equal to y is equal to 10 power 0 0.70, which is 10 power 0 0.70 into 2. So, 10 power 0.48 into z is equal to 10 power 0 0.70. As these two values are equal, we can equate them directly. So, 0.48 into z is equal to 0 0.70 into 2. Round 2s are 14, so 1.4. So, 0.48 into z is equal to 1.4 which can be written as z is equal to 1.4 divided by 0 0.48 140 divided by 48 which is nothing but 2.9 approximately so the value of z is close to 2.9 so what did we do here so we took the equation that they have given in the question substituted the value as the base are equal we equated this 0.48 into z is equal to 0 0.70 into 2 then you can easily find the value of z Let's go to another question. So the next question that they have given is 1 divided by 1 plus x power b minus a plus x power c minus a plus 1 divided by 1 plus x power a minus b plus x power c minus b plus 1 divided by 1 plus x power b minus c plus x power a minus c is equal to what? So let's start solving it. So this can be rewritten as 1 by 1 plus x power b by x power a plus all these values can be rewritten in the same way. So x power c by x power a plus 1 by x power a by x power b plus x power c by x power b. 
plus 1 divided by x plus x power b by x power c plus x power a by x power c. Okay, this equation can be rewritten as x power a plus x power b plus x power c divided by x power a. So, this can be written as x power a divided by x power a plus x power b plus x power c plus similarly x power b will be taken in the numerator. So, x power b divided by x power b plus x power a plus x power c plus similarly x power c will be taken in the numerator. So, x power c divided by x power c plus x power b plus x power a. So, we have a common denominator so which can be rewritten as x power a plus x power b plus x power c as they have a common denominator these can be added so x power a plus x power b plus x power c which can be cancelled and becomes 1. So the whole equation's value is nothing but 1. Let's solve another sum. So the next question they have given is 5 power a is equal to 3 1 2 5. Then what is the value of 5 power a minus 3? So they are given 5 power a is equal to 3 1 2 5. We know that 5 power 5 is nothing but 3 power 3 1 2 5. So 5 power a is equal to 5 power 5 and a is equal to 5. So now we know the value of a. What they have asked? They have asked to find the value of 5 power a minus 3. So pi power what is the a value? 5 minus 3 is nothing but 5 square 25. It's a very simple sum. So generally in these kind of sums, mostly this number will be the base and the power of thing will be varied. So if you could find the power in which it has fallen, you can easily find the value of A and then the finding the value of the second part of the question will be easy. Let's go to the next sum. So the next question is 243 to the power n by 5 into 3 power 2n plus 1 divided by 9 power n into 3n minus 1 is equal to what? So let's start solving. So we know that 243 is nothing but 3 power 5. So 3 power 5 into n by 5 into 3 power 2n plus 1. So 9 can be rewritten as 3 power 2 which is into n into 3 power n minus 1. So 5 5 gets cancelled. So we have the same base. So it becomes n plus 2n plus 1. Similarly we have the same base. So 3 power 2n plus n minus 1. So, which becomes 3 power 3n plus 1 divided by 3 power 3n minus 1. So, we know that they are in a division position. So, which we can be written as 3 power 3n plus 1 minus of 3 power 3n minus 1. So, this can be solved as 3 power 3n plus 1 minus 3n plus 1. So, 3n 3n get cancelled. It becomes 3 square which is nothing but 9. So this whole term can be solved and we got the value of 9. Basically in search and indices, it is nothing but about your simplification technique. So the value that we got in the question is very huge, but the answer that we got is in a very simplified version. You can see the various ways in which you can find the powers and the various ways in which you can cancel it to find to the nearest smallest term that you can find it in your options. If you are a person who is looking for a job, kindly register on our freshersworld.com. Like this video, subscribe to our channel. Thank you. <laughs>